We are serving up curry in today's daily dish, and it's a Carillon fish curry, to be exact. Chef Devin Rajkumar is in the City Line Samsung kitchen, and he's making it. Tell us a little bit about this recipe, Dev. Tracy, this is a beautiful recipe. I've been fortunate enough to travel to Kerala, which is along the Malabar coast in southern India, on more than one occasion. And when I'm there, if I close my eyes and I go there right now, I see the beautiful backwaters of Kerala, which are world famous. My family and I spent time on a houseboat and we caught fish and cooked it right on the boat. Another beautiful thing about southern India and Kerala are the aromatics. It's the curry leaf and the black mustard seed and the coconut milk and the tamarind. There's just such beautiful flavor. So today what I want to do is put this all together and give you a Kerala-inspired fish curry. You just took us on a journey. Okay, now I have to taste this. Let's get to the recipe. I'm going to give everyone a look at the ingredients involved. Awesome. And uh, Chef, where do we start? So I'm starting, of course, I talked about coconut and coconut milk. It's very popular there. So we start off with some coconut oil. Immediately, it's amazing what ingredients can do. And with just one ingredient, we start to build such cool flavor. I'm going to add in some black mustard seed, which is a very traditional ingredient. And almost immediately on a low medium heat, these will start to sizzle, crackle, and pop. Here, I have curry leaf. As a chef, as someone who's obsessed with food, this is one of my favorite ingredients in the world. It can be steeped in tea. You can put it in your mouth raw and chew it. But in this case, I'm going to cook it out. Unlike a bay leaf, this leaf can stay in the food. We don't have to fish this out, as we would say as a chef. So curry leaves go into the mix. And already, the smell in here is becoming intoxicating. Tracy, it's very important that we don't cook this out on a high heat. If the mustard seeds burn or if the curry leaves burn, it's going to be a bit of a problem. We'll have to start over. It's all about having the right amount of heat. Once it starts to cook out, to curtail the cooking process, to slow it down, I can come in with my onions. Of course, onions have a lot of moisture and they're going to let off a, uh, <clears throat> they're going to let off a bit of moisture here and that's going to help curtail the cooking. <clears throat> Curry getting you in your throat there, Chef? I, was I gonna think ask it's, you about uh, those it's, leaves. it's the like, smoke that, that it's caused. <laughs> Typically, when we're cooking, we have a hood fan or we're cooking outside. But yes, it, it got into my system. <laughs> so I have some green chili here because I want to cause uh, some more damage to my throat. So green chili goes in, and that's going <laughs> to add a really nice flavor. Let's get some of the important ingredients in here. I have kasuri methi, which is dried fenugreek leaves. So the way to use this ingredient is to rub it between your fingers. This is a really important ingredient. It's like celery and maple. That goes into the mix. I have chili powder and I have turmeric powder. That goes in. We have ginger and garlic. And this is an easier way for you at home to make this curry because it's all about just getting the ingredients into the cooking vessel and then letting them slowly and gently simmer away. We do need some salt in here. And Tracy, one of the most important ingredients I'm gonna add in is this one right here. Can you see what I have here? I'm just gonna hold it over the pan and uh, you'll see how thick it is, but can you tell me what this is here? Oh, guess not. Molasses? It looks molasses-y, doesn't it? I'll give you a hint, it's very sweet, sour, and tart. Tamarind. This is tamarind puree, exactly. You know, I love when you get questions right. Makes me very happy. <laughs> so we have tamarind going happens. in, another traditional ingredient. But we need to add in some liquid into our cooking vessel. This is called deglazing, deglacé. So I'm going to add this in just like that. <clears throat> He's getting French, everybody. <clears throat> Okay, just a little bit of water because I want to add in another very important ingredient, which is coconut milk. And this is going to go in now. How good does this nice. look to you, though? It looks amazing. Even when you were putting the coconut oil in, like, coconut oil does everything. I put it in the pan. If there's anything left on the spoon, I put it on my elbows. I'm putting it on my hands. Like, I love that stuff. So the more coconut, the better. Exactly. It's such a soft and delicate and aromatic flavor. Now, of course, it's a little bit loose, but this is the beauty of making this dish, is that it's not something that can be rushed. We want to simmer this down gently, and as it comes and simmers down, when this is almost ready, 
I'm going to add in the fish. Now, typically in India, you may use a white fish like kingfish, but here I'm using wild cod. So I take my pieces of cod, and this is a very important step because if you're going to attempt to make this at home, which I encourage you to do, it's very important that this doesn't boil too aggressively because the fish will break apart. It's also important to notice that, Tracy, after this simmers for several minutes, it'll be pretty much done. We know when the fish starts to flake apart that it, and break apart that it is basically cooked through. Keep in mind, if I take the heat off this cooking vessel and leave the fish in there, residual heat will most likely cook this through. I talk a lot about carryover cooking, right? So this is what we have mm -hmm. simmering away, and look at those nice bubbles. Now, to plate this up, I have a finished product over here, and I'm going to put it into the vessel. It smells amazing. The aromats of this are something to behold. This is a dish that you have to go out and get tamarind and you have to get your hands on some curry leaves, but it is one of the most exciting dishes you can make. And I'm not just saying that. Tracy, I was making this at home. I was cooking at Mum's the other day and my dad smelled this curry and then he had some and he was blown away. And we were taken back to our several trips that we've taken together in Kerala. <clears throat> in Kerala. That's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Because you know, a good smell can take you right back to that place. And I just love the fact that your parents appreciate your cooking and you appreciate them. It's a beautiful triangle happening there. So wish I was there to try that. You know when there's curry in the studio, it smells good up in there. You can find the recipe on CityLine.tv.